now on food uh, 38 well, we will be landing on Val and we're going to be landing at a very special location right about here where Val's Easter egg is located and in the last mission we prepared to do this by docking up here at this KSS 3A station and we are now in orbit and fully done with all the space around Val missions and accomplishments contracts so on and so forth we've already cleaned up all the debris here so let's now go on and prepare to land and place our ninth flag and do the surface science and check out that easter egg here at Val. We'll begin by going back to our KSS 3A for from uh, here in the tracking station. Let's go ahead and get some tunes going. I'm going to be listening to some tracks from the In Search of Sunrise 9 India album mixed and compiled by Richard Durand. And we're going to have some fun in this episode, checking out our first Easter egg. Still not going to spoil what it is until we land, though. It's going to be quite a surprise for some of you. So it should go without saying there are some spoilers ahead for anybody that wants to discover these Easter eggs on their own. You have been warned, and it is now time to boogity boogity boogity, as they say. Let's update our quick save and get this mission going. We will begin by transferring Millman, who is currently on the station, back into the landing vessel. And then we will undock and set up our landing. So let's go ahead and select our docking port and undock, making sure that we are not locked onto anything with our SAS. And once we are clear, we will activate the RCS on our station here, again, our SAS, and go to docking mode and pull away from our vessel just a hair there, deactivate our RCS and our SAS, and go back to staging mode, and switch over to our vessel here, which should be powered up thanks to the nukes that were on the station. Yeah, it's powered up fairly well. Let's go to map view and find out where we are going to need to go. Let's see. This is where we are trying to land. Now, we need to warp to, say, about here. Make sure that we are being pulled away from that station. Very good, it is off and on its way away. And we are on our way around the bow. And we're gonna have to burn anti-normal to bring our over the line down to where it needs to be. Let's get a good view here. Make sure that we are in some sunlight so we are getting power. Looks like we are. Very good. Let's activate our SAS and lock ourselves onto anti-normal. And let's check. All ready to go. Looks like that is the case. And after we are done realigning ourselves to anti-normal, let's see, we will be thrusting away from our station there, which will be awaiting us, uh, so we can dock back up and refuel before we come back home, hopefully by the end of this episode. Now that we are pointing anti-normal, need to get a good fix on our location. Again, that is going to be right over here. A good way to find this, look for this Australia-looking crater or surface area here which will be next to this oddly shaped similar to an L thing going on over here on the southern area of Val. Now that we're locked on let's go ahead and do a quick save to update that and we will begin to burn anti-normal. We are aiming directly for the center of that. You can kind of see a little darkened area there and then a very tiny little dark dot there. That's where we're aiming. So let's bring it on down. We need to check our staging too. We have about 300 meters per second of delta V before we have the stage. Let's go full 
Say that should be good. Alright, now let's check our apoapsis and our periapsis out again. Looking good. Now to make this landing happen, let's update our quick save and we will warp fairly close to that location. Let's warp to about, say, here. And prepare to point retro relative to the surface once we arrive at our location here. We will begin to Bring that apoapsis down, or the uh, periaps, no it's still the apoapsis, okay. We'll bring that apoapsis down until it's about here, so our landing location is halfway between us and that peri or apoapsis. So let's go ahead and do that now that we're locked on the retro. Okay, uh, so it's the periapsis after all. Alright, let's bring that orbital line down until it's right where we need it to be, out here. It's not too much surface speed to kill off. We need to check our delta V though, just in case. So once it's in the middle of that crater, we will cut the um, throttle. Let's check ourselves out. See, about there, you can kind of see that little flashing surface feature there, right above where the mouse is in that area. That's about where we are going to want to land. Looks like we need to be pointing a little more this way. So let's point anti-normal and try to correct that just a little bit more. Try to figure out just how much we are off. Need to go back to orbit mode to do this. But we have 700 meters per second of delta V. That should be enough to get ourselves lined up and partially uh, descended to the surface at least. So we are burning until that is about there, I would say. Now let's go back to retrograde on surface mode. We can close this docking port since we're not using it right now. Now we're just looking for that little flashing surface feature, make sure that we're still heading towards it. Okay, still not enough. Let's go back to orbit mode and go back to antinomal and burn just a bit more. See, it looks like we would want that line at about there and that should give us a good beat on how much of a correction we need. So let's burn until that's about there and then go back to retrograde. We'll check it relative to it uh, in orbit mode before we switch to surface mode. Fairly close. Let's switch to surface mode see if it changes. It's 
it's fairly close. We'll just go on ahead and update our quick save now and reduce our speed a little bit more. Try to bring that in to the halfway point on this little mountain range over here now. Save up there. And we'll kill the throttle about there now. Leaving us about 550 meters per second of delta V. Let's update our quick save now. And we will time warp ahead just a smidge. And cut about there. Go back to our map view, reduce our speed until that line is at the edge of this crater, I'd say. And we do need to burn anti-normal just a bit more, I believe. Once we hit that point, delta V provided. Alright, now it's looking like... See, it's a little off to the right there, so we do need to burn anti-normal. Let's go to orbit mode, so we can correct that. It's a bit difficult to see, isn't it? We'll burn that down a couple degrees, and see what that gives us. Go back to retrograde, and go back to surface mode. Still not quite enough. Let's go back to orbit mode and do a significant burn. Looks like a couple degrees is not going to be enough. We're going to need quite a bit. Let's try this. Alright. Now burn. And let's cut it about there and go back to retrograde and see where that puts us now fairly close. But we can see that easter egg right below us. We need to kill off our velocity here shortly. Looks like we just need a little bit more anti-normal burn too. We'll do that real quick and then we'll kill that orbital or surface velocity a little more and prepare to land. Alright, so let's go ahead and burn anti-normal a little bit more. Say about there. Alright, now let's go retrograde again. Set it to surface. That looks about right. But we'll find out here in a moment once it's locked on the retrograde. That's pretty close. We'll take it. Now, we need to be landing pretty much right below where we are right now. So let's kill off the rest of the Delta V that we have remaining in this stage. That should be enough. And then we'll begin our landing descent, our final approach. Let's go ahead and stage, make sure our throttle is down before we do so. And then let's boost away from that a little bit. Activate our landing gear. Rotate our vessel. Right about there. Should be fine. Let's update our quick save now. Now for the fun part. We need to make sure that we are going to land right where that is. Let's go ahead and time warp a little bit. Okay, so we can't time warp anymore. We're just going to have to go from where we are now. It would probably be a good idea to go ahead and kill some of this descent speed. Maybe bring it down to about 50 meters per second or so. Once it hits about 50 meters per second, we will cut the throttle, update our quick save, and see about landing at that Easter egg. Should be bringing us down right onto it. Let's line the front of our command pod up with that easter egg just in case we need to do some correction burns. We'll know to point straight down like this. We can deactivate the SAS and then turn it back on to lock onto that. And line this thing up as needed. Won't take too much to lock it back onto retrograde. 
looks like we are going to need to do a little bit of a burn to move ourselves closer. Let's go ahead and do that. Point it this way a little more. Point it back this way. thousand meters above the surface. I think we're doing okay. Let's check where our retrograde is pointing us. Try to get a beat on this. Looks like our retrograde is pointing us directly at that Easter egg. Fantastic. Alright, so now it's just a matter of getting down there and landing. Let's update our quick save again. We can kind of watch our debris distance to know how far the land is, or the surface is from us right now. Probably wouldn't hurt to burn a little more that way. To give us a little bit of a chance to kill off some speed as we are passing over top of it, so let's do that. Let's switch back to retrograde. There, now it's a little beyond it. Starting to see some other surface features. Hopefully that's, um, what is it called, an ice ball? An ice chunk? Hopefully we can grab one of those while we're down there. So now that Easter egg is really coming into view, you can kind of see a lot of the, uh, surface feature going on. We have 782 meters per second of delta V left in the landing portion of this lander. So that'll be plenty for this. We are coming in pretty hot though. Let's go ahead and kill our velocity back down to about 50 meters per second again. So you just never know what's going to happen. And there it is. There is our Easter egg. Let's try to land in front of it. Let's rotate this way. Looking good. Let's lock the SES there. Move it down a little bit there. There we go. That should point us a little closer to being in front of it if I just boost that way a little bit. There we go. I think we're in line to land close to closer to in front of it now. Let's point retrograde. Rotate our vessel a little bit. Like so. And begin to kill off this surface speed a little more now. Let's bring it on down in front of it. Now let's very quickly update this quick save and land this thing. Look at that little geyser over there. Okay, let's bring it down to about 50 meters per second. Wouldn't hurt to move over a little bit. Let's do that. And then point back to retrograde very quickly. Once we're close enough to being right in front of it, we'll begin to kill our speed. Let's go ahead and start doing that now. Bring it on down close to about 20 meters per second. Actually, let's just kill it all off entirely real quick. Just about. There we go. There it is. There's our Easter egg, the Val Hinge. Let's do a controlled burn for a nice stable landing now. Slowly decreasing our speed as we are approaching the surface. Once that retro mark is pretty much right on top of where the radial mark would be, we will 
lock on to radio out when we are very close to the surface. Still plenty of delta V to make a nice controlled landing. Let's rotate a little bit to while we're at it. It's time to lock radio out and land. Let's uh, activate our RCS so we can stabilize a little bit and rotate as we stabilize. Very good. Keeping that radio out lock is a great idea. We can also reduce our speed just a tad as we come back down to help out here. There we go. And we have landed. Let's deactivate our RCS, deactivate our SAS, and let's observe Val Henge, the Easter egg here on Val. You can see a few geysers going off around it. It's pretty cool. Get a nice further out view to look at this thing. And you know for sure that we are definitely going to go take a close look at this. You can see Tylo over there off on the horizon. See what else we can spot. See there's Kerbal, our star. Looks like that's about it. Not sure we're going to spot anything else. Not at the moment at least. It's a pretty cool view though. Tylo off in the distance. This is undoubtedly one of my favorite, if not my favorite, location to visit in this game. But it is now time to do what we came here to do. Let's extend these ladders and plant ourselves a flag. Put ourselves some breaking ground science down. And we will begin by getting our engineer to go EVA. Now that we have all that prepared, let's update our quick save and begin our surface missions here at. Valhenge. Alright, Millman, you are up. Show off your yellow lights as you are an engineer. Display them proudly. And there's our experiment control station. Let's get that going first. Put that in your inventory and climb on down, friend. There should be a weak enough gravitational force to be able to use our RCS here. So we can do a good little bit of exploring here. And it looks like we are going to have to climb the ladder a little bit to be able to reach those modules, but that's cool. Now that we're a little further away, we can go ahead and place this without having to worry about any of that being destroyed whenever we are decoupling those stages. So let's go ahead and place that. And let's go get our next part and let's do a little bit of a hop and see what our gravity is like. Let's activate our RCS. Do a little bit of playing around with that. Get a feel for it. Grab some communitrons, get those placed, and then we'll get our power modules placed. And we'll get our scientists out here to get the breaking ground science modules placed. <clears throat> we'll place one directly to the left. We'll place the other one on the other side.
halfway done with our engineer's missions here, or their millman's job here. Just have some power units to place after this. Got a couple, um, I believe a couple nukes and a couple uh, solar panels. Photovoltaic. So there's our second communitron. That should provide plenty of communication ability with the two relays that we have in the dual system now as well. Now it's just time to find out where the other breaking ground modules for our engine vessel. Thanks to good old short term memory loss. I believe the science is in here. Nope, that's where our power is. So there's one of the nukes and two of the communitrons. Looks like we only brought one nuke with us and not communitrons but the photovoltaic panel. Sorry. We'll go on ahead and grab that one out of the backside first and then focus on the others. So let's get you climbed up here. Close enough to the backside cargo container to be able to grab that photovoltaic panel out of there. <coughs> Leaving only the ionographer and the mystery goo for our scientist to place in that cargo bay or container. So let's grab that. You are a level 4 engineer now, so you should definitely be packing a punch with the bonuses to these power modules. That'll be useful here. We are so far from the sun, but we're not in atmosphere, so it's not as bad. But it's a good thing we brought that nuke with us. Could have used a second one, though. Might need to update that with this craft as well. Alright, so there's the sun mostly coming through here, so let's find a good spot for this, say about right here, pointing north in front of that control panel, we'll place that right here, and then we'll go get the rest of our power parts, let's go ahead and highlight that, open it, there we go. And let's mosey on over there and grab that. And we need to make sure that we grab an ice chunk from the valve surface while we're at it at some point after we're done deploying all these breaking ground modules. Let's go ahead and grab the next solar panel. Saving that nuke for last. We just have one more panel to place after this, then we can grab that nuke and we'll be done with our engineer's job. We're going to place this solar panel to the left of this one. Say about here. Should be good. Let's place it. Good, let's go grab the other one and place it on the other side next. And then we'll place the nuke on the far side, on the opposite end of where that first photovoltaic panel was, or is. And then it'll be time to do some science. well as go check out our Easter egg over there. We certainly haven't forgotten about that. And again, we are placing this one to the right. Let's make sure we're pointing north. It's almost where it needs to be, just a little further, and place it. Fantastic. Alright, now to grab that nuke and finish up Millman's job here. And we'll get our scientists out here to do their job. And now it should be safe to grab that nuke. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's 
mosey on back down and place that on the opposite side of the photovoltaic panels. on through here in this empty space. And that empty space is about where we are going to be placing the science modules. Alright, let's go forward a little bit and then turn back around. Get ourselves centered up here nicely. And let's place that right about here. That should be fine. And let's highlight this so we can get a fix on everything. That total power available is going to jump up, jump up to about 16. There it is. So it's more than enough power, but it will be very useful as the sun goes down. So that takes care of all of our engineer work here. Let's uh, face you back this way and get you in a good position for a nice little picture here soon. Make sure that you're facing the proper direction. There we go. Good job, Millman. Thank you. Go ahead and take a breather there for a few, bud. It's time for Hellwig to do her job. Alright, Hellwig, you are up. You've only got a couple things to do uh, as far as the breaking ground science modules go, but you do have a good bit to go with this external science. We will begin by swapping back to our command pod our, our vessel and going up to the command pod and grabbing a crew report while we're here on the surface in the lowlands and then we'll swap back to Hellwig and grab that and then we will grab an EVA report from the surface as well as a quote unquote surface sample There's our EVA report. And let's grab that surface sample now. Groovy. Okay, now let's get our gravity reading. And then take it. And we'll do our mystery goo. Take that and restore it as well. Collect that data and restore that goo. Then we'll grab our temperature reading over here. Make sure to take it as well. And I believe we need to climb up just a little bit to be able to reach these other ones. The seismic reading. Good bit of science from that. Cryovolcanism being detected there. Now let's check our barometric pressure reading. And let's grab that, and that'll knock out all of our vessel's science. And we'll store all that back in there. And then it's time to deploy the breaking ground science modules, which we just need to locate. I think they're back here. Alright, we'll start off with the goo ebb monitor. Place that in our inventory and climb on down. Welcome to Val. Check out Val Henge. Pretty cool. Good to have you with us, Hellwig. Just a couple quick things left for you to do there, Blue. Go ahead and let go. Wow, you still fell. Huh. Alright, let's mosey on over here and find a good spot to put our goo down. Let's see, we'll place the goo right about here. And let's mosey on back over and grab that ionographer. Ionographer. Try to say that five times fast. Ionographer, 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 ionographer. If you can do it faster, kudos. Right, let's 
let's climb up here and grab that ionographer. And once we are stably on this second ladder, we will grab that and wrap up our scientist's mission here. However, there is still one last thing for our scientist to do to garner a little bit of extra science here on the surface. And that is, we need to hunt ourselves down an ice chunk. I believe I see one right over there. Hopefully it's not a geyser. It could be a geyser. But we'll find out. For now, let's go ahead and place this ionographer right about here. Let's face this way, and move on back over that way facing this way. And we'll place it right there. And voila. Now we just need to check and make sure everything's connected. It's about 2.7 science per hour with that one. Everything's connected there. Science rate 80%. Fantastic. Alright, now let's check our ionographer out. It is now fully deployed, reading the same, looking good, three signs per hour. We have connectivity, fantastic. Alright, let's swap to that control station to make sure it does indeed have a connection. We will be able to see that up on the top left as a full connection, fantastic. Let's see how that connection looks. As a direct connection back to Kerbin, thanks to the two communitrons that we brought with us. It's not connecting to our station in orbit, though it is connecting to the... whatever we have going on out that way, interestingly enough. Okay, so it has a connection directly to the relay station that we have around Tylo, and then a weak connection out to, I guess, that's EVE. It does not have a direct connection to Kerbin, though. Should have known that by looking here. No direct connection to the space center, but that's okay. We have connectivity. That's all that matters. And now for a good look at where that Easter egg is. Here we are. On Val. There's our location. You can see that strangely oblong L shape surface here. Then the surface here that looks kind of like Australia. And then this nice little perfect circular crater. And it is right there, on that crater. Alright, now, let's find ourselves an ice chunk. Let's zoom out a little bit until we spot one. I think I see one over there, possibly. Let's see if we can find the closest one. Looks like there's one off over there. Right there, maybe. That might be the closest. I believe it is, so... Let's line ourselves up with that one. Where'd you go? There you are. Okay, so it's right about there in that direction. So we will be heading off that way. Once we get control of our scientist again. There we go. Let's go to the map view and then come back so our scientist isn't right over top of our nav ball and find that ice ball again. Say it's over that way. Okay. So we're heading north. Let's go grab some ice. Let's activate our RCS, thrust up a little bit, and get moving. And if we watch our prograde, as long as we keep it in the blue, we are moving forward at our altitude being nice and level and maintained. Let's move to the right a little bit. About that much. And then recorrect it and start slowing down a little. And let's grab ourselves an ice chunk. Pretty certain this is our ice chunk here. But we'll find out. <coughs> Get nice and close. Try to get right on top of it. There we go. Now let's see what we have. Let's move around until it pops up on us. Not so, not so sure that this is going to be it. Looks like that's the one for the rover. 
But I believe I saw something over here that may be our ice chunk. Let's go over there and check it out. Making sure not to use more than half of this EP fuel. Alright, there we go. Now let's land over here and see if this is our ice chunk. Val ice chunk. Wouldn't you know it. There we go. Right, let's get a good view of this. And pick up that ice chunk. Fantastic. Let's take that with us now, shall we? And mosey our way back on over to all of our stuff over here. that speed to about 26 meters per second so we can get over there a little quicker. Try to wrap this up in one episode. I doubt we'll be able to dock back up in this episode though, but we may extend it and make it happen. Only got about an hour and 45 minutes until I have to get ready to go to work. Or actually, yeah, about an hour and 45 minutes. Alright, let's kill that velocity come back around, I suppose. We do need to store that ice chunk, after all, so let's do that. Let's get ourselves on this vessel, grab that ladder, put that ice chunk in that command pod. get our scientist here at a great spot for our little picture. Let's store that in there now. And then go on ahead and let go. Activate our RCS. Thrust on over. Oh, Ooh, that was kind of rough. Okay, good. Ah, going for a bit of a bounce. Okay. Let's get you on over here. close to that nuke over there and make him nice and warm on this icy surface. <laughs> Let's deactivate that uh, RCS. Get you planted on the ground there. It's a nice little view. Now we just have one little thing left remaining. A couple things really. We need to get our pilot out here, plant this flag, and go take a look at the hinge. Alright, Isaiah, you are up. We'll leave the vessel in the capable hands of the probe core there. Once we are down low enough, we can go ahead and let go. Alright Isaiah, let's go plant that flag. And finish this off with a nice bow on top. Let's find a good spot for this. I'd say about here should do it. Let's get a good view. Alright, let's face this way just a tad bit more, and place that flag. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and disable that user interface. Looking fantastic. Alright, and this is number nine. 
And that'll wrap that up. Let's go check out Valhenge. Find a good spot to land after we circle around a little bit. Checking it out. Very interesting. Makes you wonder how it got here. Now, since we are here and the Easter egg has been revealed, I can talk about it a little bit. There was originally a story planned for KSP that involved tracking down all these easter eggs like this one and then searching for these SSTV signals that would lead you here to Valhenge which would reveal the location of a hidden planet and the lost civilization that is responsible for all of these things it's very unfortunate that we did not get that but Hopefully they'll include something about it in KSP2. It would be pretty fantastic if they did, in my opinion. Let's go ahead and hop over to this front side and get a, another good view here. It is quite curious, though. It's supposed to line up with some world out there. I believe either to the front or to the back of it. I'm not entirely sure which, though. We never really got to find out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, there we go. Now, let's land you nice and centered on this. There we go. Now let's turn you around. Deactivate that RCS and turn you around here. Get a good little view. So either it's somewhere out there. Or... It's somewhere. But we'll never know. I do see a nice little constellation of stars back there. Could be something. Almost looks like a question mark. It's very interesting. But, here we are. Valhenge. But we're going to wrap it up here with that, make our way back to our vessel, hop back inside, and prepare to go home, and find out if we are going to Lathe next, I would assume. And let's point ourselves north, activate our RCS, and let's get on out of here. On this cryo volcanoes, you're going to explore with some rovers at a later date in time once we start sending some rovers out to garner some science and do some exploration with in future episodes with way on down the line once we're done knocking out the uh, standard missions. vessel and prepare to get on up out of here. Alright, there's one. Alright, Millman, you are up now. leaves our friend over here. Oh, there we go. Alright, Hellwig, you are up. We may go ahead and do a little bit of time warp action until all that 
breaking ground science is collected before we take back off, but there may be enough time to go ahead and make this uh, docking happen before we close up shop here and prepare to come home in the next episode. Just want to keep an eye on our time. Still have an hour and 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Let's check our achievements out now, our accomplishments. We have landed on the surface of Tylo and planted the flag. Suborbital flight above Val, not Tylo. Some suspiciously geometric ice formations on Val. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Walked on the surface, planted the flag, etc., etc. Alright, so. Uh, just in case we happen to lose that contract, we're going to let the breaking ground science do its thing as we make our return. Say by the time we return back to Kerbin, all of that should be done transmitting. <coughs> Let's go ahead and retract these ladders and update our quick save before we take off and try to make a rendezvous and dock back up at that station so we can refuel a little bit once we get up to it. And odds are we are likely going to have to do a rescue mission to get this home, but that's okay. Nothing we haven't had to do before. Let's update that quick save now and find out where our station is. There it is. It might require quite a bit of Delta V to make this happen, but we're going to make it happen one way or the other. Okay, now let's get that station on over here a little bit. Should start seeing some of that breaking ground science even begin its transmission. We will put it about here. That should be fine. Now, let's go ahead and begin to make our orbit. I'm going to be heading towards that 315 marker. I believe that will be a good place to start. Update that quick save before we take off. And let's begin. Throttle up to about half. Retract our landing gear. So we're relatively high up off the surface. We'll begin to point towards that 315. Oops. No, no, yeah, yeah, 315. Let's point towards that 315 mark. And then lock ourselves onto it and go full throttle. To stage here in just a moment. Zero stage. A little bit of a coil up across there. Alright, now let's make sure that we're heading in the right direction. We need to be pointing a little more towards that 270 up here. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment. Line changes accordingly. It is not. We are not pointing the right way. Let's point towards the 90 mark. Go straight horizontal. Get the most effect. There we go. Now we can bring it up to about 45, I'd say. And that should put us on track with where we are trying to head. Let's watch that apple lapse as well. We're headed there. Delta V on those. What are they called? Sparks. Check the Delta V on our sparks here as we are going. It's looking like we need to probably point a little more towards that 90 again. I believe we're okay at 45. Let's raise that up to 45. But there we go. And once that hits about 50,000 meters back off and circularize and adjust our trajectory line. Our degree of inclination and so on. Hopefully we nail this. We'll find out. Should hear those kick off anyways. 
let's see what we can do. We are going to have to do a little bit of anti-normal burning once we arrive where we need to be. Let's go ahead and update by doing a quick save 2 now. And let's find out when we can do our time warp. See, we're at about 25,000 meters. I think it's close enough to be able to do some time warping. Let's try it out. Looks like we need to start doing that anti-normal burn right now. So let's go ahead and do that and try to get these lined up here. Let's check our delta V. In the meantime, alright, it is time to stage. Let's do that. And then continue our burn. Hopefully we have enough delta V to pull this off. But we will find out. Keep an eye on that apoapsis as well. Don't want it to increase too much. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of a radial in to try to bring that apoapsis down some. Until that separation does not reduce anymore. cut there and begin to anti-normal burn some more. Let's make sure that we're tracking our fuel as well. It's slowly coming around. How much delta V do we have? About 2,000 meters per second, 2,100. It's not bad. I think we'll nail this. And then we just need to worry about refueling once we get there. We can undock the fuel tank and try to use it uh, to bring us home as well. I think we'll be okay. Let's check our apple wipes this out. That's almost... Okay, so that's about as close as that's going to get. Let's go ahead and warp out to our apple wipes now. And then we'll do a prograde burn from there. <coughs> Try to bring in that distance a little bit. That's about as good as that's going to get now. We need to probably do some more anti-normal burning. Looking good. Let's go ahead and do that now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Probably bring that down to about 2.3, perhaps. Okay, so yeah, it's about as close as that's going to get. You can try to maybe do a radial out. See what that does for us. Very good. And 1.7. We'll take it. Let's go prograde. Before we continue though, let's update that second quick save. And let's see if this prograde helps us any. A wee bit there. We'll take that separation and run with it. We have 1,597 meters per second of delta V. That will totally be enough to pull this off. Let's check our time too. Very good. Let's move it into about a minute away. That'll be fine. Make sure we are set to target mode. And let's prepare to kill off that speed very quickly. So the poodle does take a minute to burn there. Bring it down to about 400 for now. And then we'll warp to about halfway away. Once we're there, we'll kill it down to about 100. Cut. It's a little 
bit more. There we go. Now we could try to use some of this mono propellant to line ourselves up a little more. Let's go to a target and then disengage the warp mode. Go to docking mode, activate our RCS, and try to brute force that a little closer. See how much it's affecting us here. Not much, so we'll just take what we have and point ourselves back to retrograde relative to the target. Once we are locked, we will warp about halfway further again. About 30 seconds away from that 1,600 meter separation, we should see this in our sights now. Just gotta find it. It should be above us though, I would say, but I'm still not seeing it. There you are. 1-8, 1 1-7. 1 as soon as it hits 1-6, we will punch the brakes. Reduce that as much as possible. And... Once it's at zero, well, I'm pretty close to it. Okay. Let's try to find that retrograde mark. Go back to staging mode and find it. And we'll lock ourselves back onto it. And reduce that. There we go. Now we're at zero relative speed. Let's point towards the target. And we'll increase our speed up to about, say, 20 meters per second or so. Once we are at about 20 meters per second, we will cut off and point retrograde. And make our way on over so we can dock back up. With about a thousand meters per second by the time we are done with this, I would say. Let's update our second quick save now. And as long as we get this done within the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I'd say, then we can finish this off in the next episode by hopefully sending this thing home and leaving that station core here in orbit. <coughs> we'll be there in about 30 seconds or so. Won't be too hard to slow down. Hydrating a little bit with this vitamin water energy tropical citrus. Good stuff. Especially good to get those vitamins in right now, considering what's going around. Pretty sure I don't have to mention what that is, but just in case I do, I'm talking about the coronavirus. Let's begin to slow down a little bit now, bring it down to about 5, maybe 10 meters per second at first, then bring it down to 5 once we're a little closer about 25 seconds away from it now. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and open the shield. Try to stay focused though. Alright, let's begin to slow down as much as possible. Looks like it's got a bit of a bug going, so let's update that second quick save again and then reload it very quickly before this bug totally gyps us here a little bit. <clears throat> Anytime you ever see a get out of whack like that, not staying locked on relative and controlling the way it should, you know that you are getting hit by the Kraken. It knows we're coming for it here in a couple moons. I think we're going to be out to Lafe next, then probably pull, and then off to Bop. But uh, we'll, we'll check that out once we get there. As soon as this reloads, that Kraken should be held at bay and we can continue. Just need to lock back on to the retro mark really quick and kill our velocity relative to the target. Alright, now let's go ahead and do that really quick. Three, two, one, zero, cut. Very nice. Okay, now let's lock on to the target. Make sure that we are controlling from our docking port. It's a shame to have to do this in the dark, I apologize for that. And make sure that we are controlling from this docking port. And lock on to the target. Now here's the fun part. We're actually going to undock from this fuel tank as soon as we find this other vessel. Where you at? You have your lights on? Do we need to turn your lights on? Your lights are on. Okay, so it's pointing that way. So it should be over here. Kind of see it. There it is. Let's try to get a fix on that docking port. Let's 
good little bit away so it's a little difficult. There we go. Let's set that as the target and make sure we are controlling from this docking port. And then we will lock it onto target mode. And once they are both lined up perfectly, let's make sure they are doing that. That one's good. Now let's go back to this one. And let's go to docking mode, activate our RCS, and begin to thrust forward. Not sure why the docking RCS and stuff isn't working. Oh, we don't have control now. Well, that's, that's something. Let's make sure to keep it on target mode. Deactivate the RCS, swap back to this vehicle and get ourselves corrected here. There we are. Alright, now... As soon as we get that good enough, there we go. Let's aim the camera at the docking port. Move in a little closer. And let's make our way to that vessel and dock up. Let's increase the speed to about one meter per second. We can go ahead and time warp over a little until that gets a little too far out of whack. Then we'll correct it. Let's cancel there. Deactivate the RCS, go to rotation mode, point ourselves back onto the target mark. Go back to linear control mode, RCS and correct that trajectory of the prograde mark over top of the target mark and begin to slow down a wee bit down to about 0.5 meters per second and let's get this thing docked up we need to rotate our solar panels a wee bit, no we don't, they're good alright so let's make sure that we are keeping ourselves locked onto the target properly with the prograde mark and our nav ball mark itself. Very good. Alright, we need to begin slowing down here soon. Let's go ahead and make sure that we are back in linear control mode and then slow down to about 0.1. Correct our prograde mark as needed. Very good. Alright. I believe we should be fine. We do need to probably rotate just a smidgen. Let's turn the RCS off, go to rotation, rotate it just a smidgen there. Go back to linear control mode, turn the RCS back on. Let's try to move that prograde mark just a hair, make it better. Deactivate the RCS, the SAS, and let's dock up. Fantastic. Now this next part's going to get a little wild. But first, let's grab these outer tanks, highlight those, and let's highlight the smaller tank on this one and bring the fuel in to that one. And then once it's filled back up, we'll highlight the larger tank and fill it. at which point we will likely have to decouple those two outer stages once these are full, unless there is still some remaining fuel to transfer. Let's go ahead and fill this one up now. And I'm going to gather that those will be out of fuel before this is full, so we'll have to decouple those. <coughs> once that is complete, we will manually decouple those. Looks like they're ready to go, so let's highlight those decouplers, holding the right shoulder button and hitting square or X on the Xbox to open those up, and decouple. Those should be floating empty tanks. Let's check their fuel reserves out. Empty, empty, okay. Now, we need 
to grab the fuel out of these two tanks and dump whatever is necessary left to fill this up. Very good. Now for the fun part. We need to dock that fuel tank up with the vessel and leave this station in orbit. And we will begin doing so by undocking from the station first. And that will slowly pull away as we undock from this. We will decouple it there. And we need to make sure that we are not about to dock back up with that vessel. But I think it's going to force us to. But we'll find out. Okay, it just bounced off a little bit. Good. Let's switch to that vessel here and activate the RCS and the SAS and pull away just a little bit more. Once we're pulled away enough, we will <coughs> cancel that out, deactivate the SCS and the RCS, actually, actually keep the SAS locked. Let's go back to our station now. We have control, good. We're going to move the station out of the way. Any direction is fine as long as it's not forward or backwards. And then once we are out of the way, we're going to cancel that velocity. Like so. Just a wee bit more. Make sure we're not going to run into it. Alright, that should be fine. Let's pull back now. Get ourselves completely out of the way here. And once we are, we'll kill that velocity off. That's providing a little bit more light, which is nice. Let's deactivate the RCS. Swap back to our main vessel control point from the dock and lock on to that and see if we can't dock up to it. We may not be able to due to the types of docking ports we have going on here, but we'll find out. Forward just a little bit until we see our prograde mark. We'll put it right over top of the target mark. And we'll deactivate the RCS and correct our rotation in rotation mode set to be right on top of that target. Go back to linear control mode, reactivate the RCS, pick up some speed. Just to make sure that we are aimed at the camera so we can get a better view here. Hopefully this works. If not, we're going to have to just leave this where it is, dock back up to it with the station, and send out a rescue rescue vessel to bring this other vessel back home. But we shall see. Let's just make sure we are staying lined up. Let's go ahead and slow down just a wee bit. And I hope they dock. I'll be. It's allowing us to dock to it. That's fantastic. Alright, so let's disengage the RCS, go back to staging mode and point ourselves towards prograde. We'll do it manually at first to make sure we aren't going to bump into this station. It's looking like it may be in the way though. So, let's switch to that station. Get it out of the way. Go to docking mode, use the RCS to pull it away. Once it's far enough out of the way, we'll cancel that velocity. There we go. Now let's swap back to our main vessel. And go to map view and come back to get our nav ball reset. Lock ourselves prograde. Swap back to stage mode, staging mode. Let's make sure that we are controlling from this docking port here. And as that's rotating, let's grab this engine and turn it off. Fantastic. Now we are controlling it and aiming and using this engine on this vessel from this vessel. Now we just need to get Kerbin lined up relative to Jewel and this moon and make our way back home and then in the next episode. For now let's update our quick save.
and I'm going to take a quick break and when I come back we are going to finish this up with about an hour remaining by the time I get back and hopefully we can pull it off. But for now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this very special episode featuring the Valhenge Easter Egg and hope you have learned quite a bit more with this episode having to do quite a bit of a maneuver to dock back up. So, there's that. But, uh, we'll see you all again here shortly when we return to Kerbin. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.